In the headlines, police continue their search to identify a man linked to card fraud. Employment rates in our area remain vaguely the same, if not a bit worse. The city of Rocky Mount has voted to approve their 2011-2012 fiscal year budget, and it's almost time to say farewell to the leader of our local police force. These stories and more coming up on Newsbreak starting now. From WHIG TV, this is News Break 31. Now, here's Marie Torres. Hello, you're watching WHIG TV News Break. I'm Marie Torres. In today's crime report, a man on the run from authorities racks up charges. According to Rocky Mountain Police Friday, officers were responding to a larceny at Walmart. Police say when they arrived, the accused 48-year-old Bobby Allen Proctor sped off in a moped hitting two vehicles, one in the parking lot of McDonald's on North Wesleyan Boulevard, then another at an intersection. Police say Proctor finally abandoned his vehicle and fled on foot until he was apprehended handed behind Home Depot. He is now charged with two counts of hit and run, misdemeanor larceny, damage to property and failure to stop for blue lights and sirens. Proctor was taken to Nash County Jail under a $5,000 secured bond. Police arrest a man on drug charges in an area neighborhood. Sunday afternoon, officers on bicycle patrol observed the suspect, 34-year-old Laron Dinell Atkins, drive into the parking lot of Midtown Grocery on 901 West Thomas Street. He was initially observed for a noise ordinance violation, but through further investigation, Atkins was charged with possession of marijuana and possession of cocaine. In addition, he faces a destruction of evidence charge for allegedly attempting Attempting to swallow the crack cocaine, Atkins was jailed under a $3,000 secured bond. Police continue their search to identify a man linked to card fraud. Rocky Mountain Police seek the public's help to ID this man, pictured here through an ATM surveillance camera. The suspect allegedly tried to use his victim's debit card on the evening of June 20th at the Cash Points ATM in the Rivers Edge Shopping Center in Rocky Mount. It's believed he obtained the card after breaking into the victim's vehicle. If you can identify the suspect, you should contact Crime Stoppers at 252-977-11. 1111. In other news, empl employment rates in our area remain vaguely the same, if not a bit worse. The latest data from North Carolina's Employment Security Commission shows that for the month of May, Edgecombe County's rate is 14.4 percent, barely a skip from 14.5 percent in April. As for our other counties, the jobless rate increased by just a hair. For the month of May in Nash County, the jobless rate is 11.9 percent compared to 11.5 percent in April. And for Wilson County, the rate for May is 12.8 percent compared to 12.5 percent in April. As for the city of Rocky Mount, which continues to hold the top spot for a North Carolina metropolitan area with the highest unemployment this year, May's rate is 12.7 percent compared to April's 12.5 percent. As always, we'll be keeping you up to date with the latest trends in employment in our area. The city of Rocky Mount has unanimously voted to approve their 2011-2012 fiscal year budget. Monday afternoon, Rocky Mount City Council members, with the exception of absent Councilman Lamont Wiggins, okayed the $211 million plan introduced last month. The budget includes a $1 a month hike for residential solid waste and recycling customers and a pay freeze for nearly 1,000 city employees. The budget does not increase property taxes and utility services such as electric, gas, water, sewer and stormwater rates would remain the same as well. Leading, the, leading to the final vote was an amendment to the contract for a new heating, ventilating and air conditioning system at the former Booker T. Washington High School. Operating costs for the Booker T. Theater will cost about $10,000. 
And it's almost time to say farewell to the leader of our local police force. Earlier this year, Rocky Mount Police Chief John Manley Jr. announced his plans to retire from the Rocky Mount Police Department. Now, after 32 years of service, Manley's retirement will be effective this Friday, July 1st. We recently sat down with the chief as he discussed what he'd miss the most about his work and his plans for the future. Have worked 31 actually is in the system. We'll have 32 with, with accumulated sick leave. So it also tells you I have not taken a lot of time off work. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. I will always still stay involved in some level of service oriented type uh, issues in this community. Uh, Rocky Mountain is home for me. Uh, I will never take my hands off of the city of Rocky Mountain. We'll always have something to, I hope to add positively to the, to the area of service in this area. I miss the people uh, here. Uh, interacting with them on a daily basis. Uh, but I still won't miss this community because I'm going to stay within it. Uh, when I gave you those three problems while I go, I said good law enforcement and good citizens and then their uh, of judicial system. Now I've talked about going into the judicial system. I thought about going to law school, but I don't know about that. So I'm going to I'm going to get on the side of the triangle called the community and I'm going to champion those things that I think citizens should do to help our community be greater. So. Um, I'm looking forward to get out there and just intermingle with more in the community. This Thursday, June 30th, will be Manley's retirement celebration that will take place at the Imperial Center on 270 Gay Street in Rocky Mount from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. There will be a brief program starting at 2.30. All are welcome to attend. When we return on news break, a U.S. Congresswoman will once again be heading our way, this time to talk health care reform. And we'll have more going on locally at the library this summer. These stories right after these words. It's back for a limited time. Every new Buick and GMC at Davenport Auto Park is being offered at the GM employee price. Combined with factory incentives, now you can drive out for up to $5,000 below dealer invoice amount. And that's not all. With Davenport's dealership for life, you can even get a free lifetime warranty. Plus free oil changes, rotations, and more for no extra charge. Employee price, rebates up to $5,000, free lifetime warranty. See if anybody beats that deal. But hurry, this offer ends soon, only at Davenport Auto Park in Rocky Mount. Still your dealership for life. We're your news team bringing it home to you with meteorologist Fred Holdsworth, anchor Marie Torres, sports reporter Edward Green, and Matt Havitt, our studio guy. WHIG TV News Break, your voice in the community. The Country Inn and Suites is your home away from home with a staff that always treats you as family. If you or your church or company has visitors, give them a great Rocky Mount welcome with a special discount on their overnight or extended stay. Not only is the Country Inn and Suites a comfortable place, we'll spoil them with fresh cookies and complimentary breakfast. We are filled with luxuries like an indoor pool, fitness center, and a guest laundry. The business center includes a boardroom, connection to high-speed internet, and catering for meetings is always available. Call me, Donna Vachavis, at 252-442-0500 for a tour and or to set up your corporate rate. You're always welcome as family in the country, country and in suites, rocking out. Welcome back to WHIG TV News Break. I'm Marie Torres. National health care reform will be the issue of interest this week as a U.S. Congresswoman will once again be in Rocky Mount. U.S. Representative Renee Elmers of the 2nd District of North Carolina will be the keynote speaker at a legislative forum scheduled to take place from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. Wednesday at the Gateway Convention Center. Elmers, a freshman, freshman Republican, has frequently opposed Obamacare, stating its negative impact 
impact on small businesses and the presumed downs downside of government-controlled health care for the individual. The forum is sponsored by the Golden East Chapter of Society for Human Resource Management and the Rocky Mount Area Chamber of Commerce. Tickets are on sale $20 per person and tables for eight are $150. To purchase, you can call the chamber at 252-973-1211 or visit the chamber's website at www.rockymountchamber.org. With more programs going on for young readers this summer, here's Braswell Memorial Library's Youth Services Supervisor, Linda Bunch, to tell us what's coming up at the library tomorrow. Like this a Wednesday, we have two identical programs. One is at 11 o'clock and one is at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And this year, for the first time, we're having the Balloon Lady. And she is coming. She tells stories and does balloon sculpturing. And she will be here for the two programs. So we're excited to have her this year. All ages are invited. It's totally free. You can have further information. There's no registration involved. And you can call at 442-1951. Again, that's 442-1951, extension 244, or visit our website, which is www.braswell-library.org, and learn all about all the programs that we have for all ages this summer. But Donna Pruitt is the balloon lady, and again, that is Wednesday, June 29th at 11 and at 2 o'clock. Thanks, Linda. We'll be keeping you in the know about more programs to come for the whole family at the library. Stay tuned after the break for the latest in local weather. It's back for a limited time. Every new Buick and GMC at Davenport Auto Park is being offered at the GM employee price. Combined with factory incentives, now you can drive out for up to $5,000 below dealer invoice amount. And that's not all. With Davenport's dealership for life, you can even get a free lifetime warranty. Plus free oil changes, rotations, and more for no extra charge. Employee price, rebates up to $5,000, free lifetime warranty. See if anybody beats that deal. But hurry, this offer ends soon, only at Davenport Auto Park in Rocky Mount. Still your dealership for life. The Country Inn and Suites is your home away from home with a staff that always treats you as family. If you or your church or company has visitors, give them a great Rocky Mount welcome with a special discount on their overnight or extended stay. Not only is the Country Inn and Suites a comfortable place, we'll spoil them with fresh cookies and complimentary breakfast. We are filled with luxuries like an indoor pool, fitness center, and a guest laundry. The business center includes a boardroom, connection to high-speed internet, and catering for meetings is always available. Call me, Donna Vachavis, at 252-442-0500 for a tour and or to set up your corporate rate. You're always welcome as family in the country, country and in suites, rocking out. Thanks for staying with us. You've seen them before. Now hear the importance of adopting locally and how to help homeless animals in our Pet of the Week with SBCA Alliance of North Carolina President Shelley Milburn. It is so important because there are so many dogs that end up at the shelter and um, there's, there are thousands and thousands that are euthanized just in our county alone a year. Um, you can find any breed you want at the shelter. They have Yorkies, they have Poodles, they have Boston Terriers just like Tinky and Bean. Um, you just have to keep looking and you will find exactly what you're looking for and even the mutts. You know, they, they need love too and they make the best dogs. 
And so where'd um, you get um, Tinky and Bean? Tinky came from the Nash County Animal Shelter, the one in Nashville, and Bean actually came from a Boston Terrier rescue group out of Raleigh. So um, you can either contact a rescue group if there's a specific breed you're interested in. They have a breed rescue for every kind of dog and um, you can always just check your shelter, the Rocky Mount Animal Shelter. Uh, there's Wilson County and there's also Edgecombe in Tarboro and um, the Nash County Shelter. Alright, and some people may have misconceptions about um, getting rescue pets or, or pets from the animal shelter. Clear that up. You know, there's a lot of people um, just have to give their pets up for reasons that are nothing to do with the animal. They get sick, they lose their jobs, they have to move, um, they can't take care of them anymore for just various reasons. It doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the dog. Some people give them up for selfish reason, reasons, like they move and they have a new house and they just don't want a dog in it things like that. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with the dogs that you get at the shelter. Of course there are some there that will need a little bit of work and some help, um, but a lot of times they'll be just perfect and won't even need to be house trained or anything, you know. It's just hard to believe what you can get there. Alright, and you're a success story, I guess, of adopting pets um, who needed home so desperately. Yes. How have these pets, I guess, increased or been beneficial to you? Oh, these are like my children. You know, they go everywhere with me. They go to work with me every day. Um, I don't know what I would do without them, you know, and I have two others at home. They're not Boston Terriers, but they're, all, they're purebred dogs. They were also rescued, and um, I, just, I just couldn't imagine life without them. All right, and tell us how you've stepped up into a, a recent role in, in pet advocacy. Yes. I have, um, I'm now the president of SPCA Alliance of North Carolina, and we are dedicated to rescuing dogs from the shelters in Nash, Edgecombe, and Wilson. And um, we're having a yard sale this weekend to help raise money. It's at, um, in Tarboro at Calvary Episcopal Church on Main Street from 7 a.m. to 12. And there's going to be lots of stuff to buy, and um, there's going to be hot dogs and a bake sale and just all kinds of stuff going on. So all the proceeds go to the rescue and they help us save more dogs, they help us spay and neuter more dogs and, and just help them instead of them having to be killed. Thanks Shelly, that event was this past Saturday. The fundraiser raised nearly $1,000. If you missed it and would still like to donate, you can mail checks payable to SPCAANC to the address 2455 Hurt Drive, Rocky Mount, NC 27804. It's now time to take a look at weather with WHIGTV meteorologist Fred Holdsworth. Fred? Well, a little bit of rain yesterday scattered around our area. Some people got quite a bit. We picked up 8,400. Areas to the south of us got more as severe thunderstorms rolled through Wilson County and uh, over to Wayne and Greene counties. And some of these thunderstorms did put down quite a bit of rain, which of course was very much needed. Let's take a look at our forecast map and see what we can expect for today. Two areas of severe weather stand out right away and one of them through southwestern North Carolina, western South Carolina, most of Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi, a little bit of northeastern Louisiana, and most of Arkansas. All of this will be in connection with this cold front which will be moving into our mountains later on today. We could see in our area some strong thunderstorms, maybe even severe, as the uh, cold front approaches. This will be sometime between 3 and midnight, and as it gets closer we can narrow that down, but right now that's the way it looks between 3 and midnight will be the best chances of these strong storms. Moving farther to the west, we see that another severe area in east, eastern Colorado and western Kansas right in here, and maybe just a little bit of Nebraska right in here. This is orographic rainfall where the air is pushed up the mountainside, it cools, and then 
releases in the form of thunderstorms in the summertime and Colorado is one of the leading thunderstorm states. Of course, Kansas, Texas, Oklahoma, all this is the famous Tornado Alley. High pressure over the Dakotas this morning and afternoon into tonight. That This whole uh, high pressure system hanging on through the day today and tonight. This will give this area a respite from the showers and thunderstorms. Although if you go just a little farther to the north into Canada, rain and thunderstorms once again. Going farther to the west, during the afternoon we'll see rain along the California coast up into Oregon and Washington. This is with an occluded front that is right along the coast of Oregon and Northern California. A warm front stretching from a low pressure system over Lake Superior becomes occluded right here. This is where the cold front and warm front have come together. This will set off rain and thunderstorms up towards the New England states. Well, let's look at our forecast now and see what we can expect for today. Showers and thunderstorms will become likely during the afternoon with a high of 94, southwest wind at 8. Showers and thunderstorms with a low of 72, south wind at 6. Wednesday, slight chance of showers and thunderstorms with a high of 86. Winds will be west and go to the northeast at 7. Wednesday night, partly cloudy with a low of 65. Winds will be light. Thursday, sunny, 88 degrees will be our high with an east wind at 6 miles per hour. Thursday night, clear with a low of 64. Friday, sunny, 91 degrees. Friday night, partly cloudy with a low of 68. And the heat comes back on Saturday with a high of 95 degrees and a low of 71. Our high temperature yesterday, 94 degrees. Our low this morning was 73. 84 hundredths of an inch of rain during the past 24 hours. And the record high for this date, 100 degrees back in 1954, which was quite a hot and dry year in North Carolina. As a matter of fact, Hurricane Hazel broke that drought in October. And the low temperature, 51 degrees, 1981. And that's a look at your local weather. Now back to you. Thank you, Fred. That's all for us here today on Newsbreak. Join us again Thursday at noon for more news that's impacting the community. For WHIG-TV, I'm Marie Torres. We'll see you next time.